Lucian mid is all the rage at the moment. Faker has been abusing it. It all revolves around Seraldas Grudge. People have started to shift from going Lord Doms to Seraldas because of the passive, okay? You're slowing them on your ultimate. Every damaging ability, every bullet. Skrrr! And they're just slowed like a rock as you shred them. I'll show you guys in-game. It's so fun to play. I recommend giving it a go. Let's jump on a Summoner's Rift. Today's VOD boys, sit back and relax. I'm going to have two beautiful Faker gameplays coming right up. Very enjoyable to watch. Now, Lucian mid, guys... He's running Teleport Faker because he's a pro player, he's playing in Challenger. In your games, I guarantee you, you'll have better results running Ignite, cheesing out level 2, level 3 solo kills. Um, there's so much potential there. So just because Faker's running the Teleport, I wouldn't really recommend Teleport to lower ELO players at all. Um, honestly, on almost any champion, just because it's not getting utilized correctly. Um, so definitely opt for more aggressive summoner spells, and you'll see him come into lane now. Press the attack, the rune page is very standard. Um... Just copy it down, you'll have no issues with this. Lucian starting Q with level 1, guys, and you're an absolute demon in the early game. You're the alpha of the land, you're the top dog, no one's gonna beat you, okay? Start your Q. Now, sometimes you can start E, like, imagine they have a Syndra, and the Syndra wants to throw a Q. You wait for the Q, and as it's coming out, you just E into her, really aggressive, and just auto-demolish her, okay? Different, slight different variations in the early game, but into a rise, you can see Faker utilizing his range, and you want to be using the Qs on the minions. You've got to be careful though. So Lucian, you 100% level two first. Boom, right there. But you don't want it crashing into the tower at level two, do you? So just slowly whittle the wave away. So when you hit level two, the wave is still in the middle. Chovy does this the best out of any mid. He hits level two spike with the wave in the middle of the lane. So you can move up and you have so much more um, room to auto attack them before the tower starts aggroing on top of you. So just play around with it and see Faker Working this rise down slowly. He's going to build a CS lead. Both mids have teleport, so at the end of the day, rise shouldn't get hit too hard. Rise is an emerging mid laner in the meta at the moment. Very strong with Frozen Heart. Um, he is one of the best mages into like AD picks, especially like this, like this Lucian. Once he starts going, the rise will be unkillable with Frozen Heart. He can go Frozen Heart, Hourglass, Tabai. You can get very beefy on rise. But this is not until the mid to late game, so Faker should be able to dominate it. You can see him trying to line him up, like try and line the rise up with the minions on this Qs. And this wave is pretty even. It should come back into Faker eventually. Oh, he's weaving autos. He's just going to keep on slow shoving and try and deny. You see this minion Faker is zoning from? Do you see it? That minion right there. And rise moves up for it. Faker instantly takes that trade. At high levels, guys, it's all about trading on minions. Low levels, people will trade for no reason, right? People just run in and just be like, mm, I have an ability, I'll throw it. But in high elo, okay, it's all about like minions because the, the players farm very efficiently and they're not going to give a lot of these creeps because they know how important they are. So as soon as they go and use something on the creep, that's when you move in. You always need a why when you're trading. Too many people don't think like, they're like, they just trade for the sake of trading. Always have an objective in mind. Um, and trading when they're trying to go for the CS is always the, honestly, the best path in the mid lane to start building up advantages. Faker goes for the hard shove. He'll hit his base. Rise teleports into the mid lane. Got a slight advantage here. I'm wondering what he's going to get in this first back. And he has bickies as well. Um, There's a skirmish is breaking out in the bot lane. Renekton teleports down. I'm wondering if Faker will complete the base and then try and regroup. Gets the pickaxe, of course. And we're going to teleport in here, looking to pick up some kills in the bot lane skirmish. Ryze has already used his teleport, remember? We grab the Lulu, and this is like teleport. Obviously, if you ran Ignite, you couldn't regroup here. So teleport really coming in clutch for Faker. One of the best players with map awareness. He picks up two. Is he going to be able to get the Ryze? He still has Flash. Q goes wide. Flash is into Lee Sin with the Q miss, and we pick up our quadra kill to begin the game. And this is what she liked to see. All the gold, all the kills onto Faker in the early game. This is not going to happen every game, guys, for you. Sometimes it's going to come down to solo kills, but sometimes good roams and good map awareness like this is going to net you some positive returns. First item almost always is going to be a Gale Force. Second is the Grudge, okay? People kind of get mixed up on what you go second on Lucian. You're going straight for that armor pen, straight for that Grudge. As Lulu moves in, we use our culling. Naughty girl. No flash, nothing available, and we get our back stopped. You see how the virus runs mid? I always talk about this macro. I think it's super important. 
Faker's bot clearing the wave. There's a wave in the mid lane. Your bot lane goes mid to clear it, okay? Now Faker will run back mid and his bot lane shoves one wave and then they'll rotate back into the bot lane. It's the most gold the team can possibly get, okay? We head back, we start working our way, we get our quiver. And we are 1k gold advantage for blue side for Faker here. And Riot has said they don't like Lucian mid. They, they have a problem with it. They're thinking about making his kit more ally centric where he's going to be forced to have a support around him. They don't like solo lane Lucian. Like, come on, right? What the what did he do? Give him a break, man. There's Tristana as well. Why don't you kill Tristana too? We got a freeze here. We got red buff as well. We do have to be a little bit careful. You can see Rise is going for the Frozen Heart. Um, we have no flash. And into a Rise and Lee Sin, if, if, you get, if the Rise gets one W, you're probably going to die. You're very squishy. And people in this moment right here, I see so many people and they just like, okay, got four kills. I've got to go. I've got to go super aggressive and they overshove. I do this all the time. I get a lead. I'm like, okay, now I need to push it. I don't think, and I instantly just start going for crazy trades. Next up, the jungle just comes mid. I give my entire bounty over for no reason as Fake is moving in. If he had ult there, probably would have killed. But you need to play around when you like your strong points. So play around your vision, play around your summoners as well. If you got no flash, if you have no vision, don't risk the bounty. There's no need. You've already got the lead, okay? It will slowly build and there'll be better opportunities. I'm going to see him with no vision extending. As ultimate, so you want to get the wave out of the wave, out of the way, and then if Ryze comes up, you just pop your W and then your R. He's gonna cull, Ryze dropping to like one health. We have no flash, so we're just gonna try and eat up some plates. And now Ryze with no teleport, gonna hit back. Oh, doesn't head back to base. He's getting ping for the Lee Sin. Lee Sin dashes. We juke out on Lee. He's Lee Sin's only level five, and that is all you need. Fake out. Huge mistake. I was talking about that, like, there was no need for that. Like, that was just so unnecessary, him looking for it. Lee Sin comes in clutch, gets the bounty, and Faker heads back into base. And he's probably thinking, why did I do that? For what reason? There was no reason. Just a little bit of fun, a little bit of trolling. And the Thresh is going to try and get the rise. Zerka Greaves picked up. I've seen different boots. I've seen some Lucidity boots. I've seen Tabai. It just depends on the situation. You can never go wrong with Zerkas, but they're very cost-efficient boots. You do have slight mana problems on Lucian, by the way. Um, you need to be very careful and very like stingy on how you use your abilities in the wave unless you're picking up blue buffs. So just be aware of this, like you don't want to be spamming all your abilities as soon as you get back to base, uh, back to lane, because you're just going to run yourself too low on mana. As we come back to lane, we get our vision out. Now that we have the vision, we should be able to play really aggressive into this Ryze, who has a little bit of armor, but no health to play with. So we should be able to get him down pretty low, I think, in these 1v1s. Poppy, hands off blue, surely. Thanks, Poppy. If you're a jungle main, please take note. Blue buffs are the mid laners. It's our decision whether you get second blue and onwards. As we pick up the ward in the mid lane and the Q, beautiful. He was just ready to go. You can clear wards on Lucian. Oh, these Qs are clipping and we just hit ult. Now don't forget like ch champions like Lucian, oh, almost get a solo. Champions like Lucian, like Orianna, like Syndra. Your ultimates don't need to be used for kills. You can just use it to zone them to 30% health and then they've got to go back to base or they stay in lane and risk getting jungle ganked or all in. As we get our teleport into the top side here, Faker map awareness, he's moving in. He has great F key knowledge. Dash is over, looking to pick up the Lee Sin. There's a double buff to be picked up if he can get it. Ignite for the vision. We've got flash, this Lee Sin is cooked. W flash into the autos. Yes sir, double buffs five and one for Faker. 90 CS at 10. And that is exactly what you need. Cheeky little auto. Oh, dude, his map awareness is so good. But as I was saying, 
Don't be afraid to just pop the bloody ultimate if they're in a bad spot. Even if their enemy is full health, you will chunk them. Culling does like over a K bloody damage at level one. It's crazy ability, guys. Just use it. I see too many people just holding the entire lane. Like they just hold. They hold till they're like, oh, I want to get them to 40% and then all in. Just all in. Just go. Don't be bloody scared. We pick up our Gale Force 11 minutes in. And the only time I'd say to delve into different items is probably like cracking into like, if the enemy has like a bunch of tanks, they have like Udyr, Ali, uh, and then top lane is like Urgot or like Cho'Gath or something really beefy. Like you can go cracking, I guess, for some true damage. The extra mobility on Gale Force is on Lucian is so valuable because number one, you can reposition with the culling, but also number two, it's like, it just adds to the strength of the kit. You got so much mobility through your E and if you already if you have the Gale Force on top of the E, you can use it more aggressively because you still have some mobility left in the kit. You don't have to be so reserved with your E, if you know what I mean. Ult available. And we just pull it. Do you see? Like he's just pulling this ultimate whenever he can. Minute and a half cooldown, so it's not it's not it's not as though it's a short cooldown, but don't be sparing with it. As I hope everyone's having a great Monday. Not too hungover from the weekend. Gale Force, weaving autos. There you go. Huge chunk. Like, it's so Like, Lucian trading is just gross. You can't. If he gets this type of lead, you just cannot trade. Hey, hey, hey. What are we tanking for? Your goal now? Can we stop tanking towers, sir? Your goal now is to try and eat up these plates. You really need to try and eat up the plates, but Lee Sin... God, I miss, I miss playing in Korea with these supports, dude. They're like a second jungle just perma-roaming with you. It's so nice. You never feel alone. Unless, of course, the enemy support is roaming in your lane. Try and look? Alright. Rise base goes out. Fake up. You should hard shove this next one and then either look for plates or go for the roam bot. Let's see what it does. On Q? Yes, sir. We'll get some plates for ourselves. Comes Lee. Q. Double auto. Ultimate backup in 10 seconds now. And now the second item is what we're looking for. It's the grudge. I don't know who was the first player I saw doing the grudge. Maybe it was Showmaker. I'm not sure. It was, it was one of them, guys. Like, one of the top team mids just started building Grudge second on Lucian. And now every bloody person does it. Because you'll see why. Like, I've played I've played a bit of this strategy myself in solo queue. It's just so nice. Number one, like, if you just... In a 1v1 scenario, you've got plenty of armor penetration. Your abilities are slowing them. But even in the mid to late game, in the middle of a team fight, just WR. And you just... If someone gets stuck in a culling, they're just... They're done. Your entire team can hard engage. You're just AoE slowing everybody. It's... Lucian has no CC, right? So it just adds another dynamic to his kit. Um, on top of that, you've got the Gale Force for so much mobility. The only problem people have is you're forcing AD, full AD comps, okay? In my opinion, full AD comps don't matter as much as people think, especially in lower elos. Um, it's more about how you play the champion. You're going armor pen second anyway, so you're not going to run into problems until really like 20 to 30 minutes plus. Um, and in lower elos, man, like... People aren't itemizing correctly. Even if they have a bunch of armor, like you get pen, it's some, some bloody player gets picked out. It's not a big, it's overrated, honestly. In high elo, full AD comps can become a problem. But most players, like if you pick Lucian, especially early rotation, they'll pick up AP, okay? They have a they have wide champion pulls somewhat. Especially in a region like Korea, like maybe not in NA, in NA or OS or somewhere, but EU and Korea players will usually pop it up. Oi! Waste the culling, unfortunately. And this teleport is actually coming in so clutch. He's going to regroup with the team here. We have Flash. Hogmore. A little bit low. We grab the Lulu. We have to burn our Flash for it. We're not getting any of these kills, unfortunately, though. Make it a little bit cheeky. And none of these outers have dropped. I was wondering like kind of when this bot lane is going to go mid and he'll drop into the side lane, but until the bot lane outer drops, you don't usually send your mid laner to the side. Okay, 
keep on pressure. I'm going to blue buff. So gross though. I always don't like versing Lucian. I usually try and pick something like Syndra against it. It usually can do the job because if, if he builds aggressively like this, I can usually one shot him in the mid game. But even then, man, like you still can't hard abuse the matchup. 160 farm at 16. Everything is lining up perfectly for a 10 CS per minute game. And T1 have been looking pretty good lately. I think they dropped their games last night. Was it last night or the night before? Um, I don't know, man. They just got rolled in a best of um, best of tree. I don't know who was by, man. This wasn't really a good game by them. Calling pop. Lulu zoned, actually. This is good. If we can get any CC from the Thresh or the Varish as Faker moves in, he'll pop the Lulu so easily. And now he'll shoot a bit of play it like just slow in the back lane. Front to back. As Renekton tries to move in. Oh, dude, nice kick by Lee. Baker gets the Cogmon, but will die. And this game lining up to be a lot closer than I thought it would be. Um, okay. Q, 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 come on. We Lee just waits it out. Q lands, nice. Thresh stops it, but it just do not matter. And Faker picks up his grudge in the base. I'm excited. Excited for you guys to see this first R. Like, most of you probably already seen it, but like, man... The first time I played it, and I was just mowing people down, I was just laughing. It was so funny, man. They just can't move, and they just sit there, take the entire culling, and it's a whole health bar. Um, okay. And I'd say now we can drop into the side lane. Dragon is spawning, so we should probably just go straight through mid. And Poppy Jungle is very popular. In Korea. When I played in Korea, I was surprised how many players played Poppy. I don't know if it's like two or three guys and they're all like one tricking it, but there's a lot of Poppy jungle, man. It's not that bad of a pick. Has a great gank potential. I'm not sure on the I'm not sure on the clear, like I really don't know. But he never seems too far behind. Mobility boots, just zoom around the map. Just look for dives. Baker starts up the Drake. Enemy team's still 3k behind. They got really nice lead through mid and bot. The Rise will match. The problem is the Rise, the rise cannot go anywhere near this Lucian. Baker could, like, I mean, you can't opt to really freeze this wave. Let's just see what he, I'm just interested to see what he does with the wave. It looks like he's just gonna hard shove it. And he's going to try and ping his team towards going in. I think they should try and set up Poppy into the tower dive if anyone defends. Like, Poppy should be wrapping around behind. He's scared there's someone in this brush, though, yeah. Like a Lee Sin or someone just hovering. This is great by his team. Because usually, the, like, the, like, the enemy should be looking to try and shut down Faker here. Like a pops the culling, and you see, look at, dude, he dashes in, and he gets hardcore baited. Is he able to live, but, and that's just the first instance of how gross the grudge is. Enemy team is all sitting, you could kind of feel the presence, like you could see no one on the map, and you just knew something was going to happen. Baker hitting the back line, Varus picks up the Lee Sin, move in for the slows, and you see how it just adds so much, I, like, I, I, what's the word, like it just adds like so much diversity to Lucian's kit. Before he had no CC in, just a pure damage machine, but now it can actually be used to CC people, slow them up. This gives him more than a one directional play style, so I think that's why Lucian's seeing so much success lately. I've seen some different items for third. I've seen Black Cleaver into a lot of the tankier comps. Um, it really depends. I think he does. I think he. I think it looks like he's gonna go Black Cleaver this game, right? But you can still opt to go proper aggressive. You obviously can't go Infinity Edge. You'd have to go something like Essence into IE just because you need that 60% crit. I think you're pinging Baron. He's going to drop up into the top lane. 200 CS, 20 minutes. We're on track, baby. 
We've got our flash, so we can play pretty aggressive in the side lanes. Still no vision set up though. Remember to always play around vision in the side lanes. I don't care how far ahead you are, guys. Just if you don't have if you don't have the vision, just don't bloody overextend too far. Don't throw your leads for no reason. Just egoing. As it looks like he wants to set up a two man baron, probably doable, and we do. Please tell me his bot lane doesn't get picked off mid for no reason. Faker has culling. He's going to move in. Teamfight erupts. He pops it to start. And look. <laughs> How nice is that? Man, oh man. We pick up the Renekton. Looking to pick up some more. Remember, the W is going to be slowing as well. And we grab three members. And that's going to mean the Baron set up now for blue side. Enemy team really struggling. The Rise... Trying to get his Seekers and his um, Frozen Heart like I was talking about. He'll be stacking like 150 plus armor. But it's already it's 21 minutes in and Blue Side has full objective control and map control. It, 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 it really doesn't matter, to be honest. How much armor this guy gets. He's going to have to hit like 30 plus minutes. Which just doesn't happen too often in Solo Queue. Especially in like high elo career. And one video I'm very excited to do this week. So on Wednesday on the patch... Prowler's Claw can no longer target minions. Um, they're trying to get rid of a lot of mobility. What is the 1800 LP Kiana going to start building? I guess we'll have to find out in the video. We'll see. Um, Duskblade Eclipse. I don't know. Maybe he'll still go Prowler's just because like, he likes the extra lethality. We'll see. My Kiana. I don't want to boast, but I have a 53% Kiana win rate at the moment. It's risen from 33%. So look. I am improving at a drastic rate. I could become the best Kiana soon. As we find Cogmore, Flash is in. Cogmore, Flash for Flash. That's worth, so worth Flash for Flash on enemy AD carry with no mobility. Because we have a bloody truck ton of mobility. Even the autos in the least, and he gets CC'd up into the tower. Gwen picks it up. At the moment, the mid lane meta is really gross. If you're not playing like the Lucian, if you're not playing the Akali, the Silas, um, you might as well just not play at all. These are the champions in the mid lane. Tristana does well too. Um, just bullshit champions, man, not proper champs. They're trying to give some power back, back to us mages next patch. Um, but in doing so, they're, they're still indirectly buffing champions like the Silas. Like, I don't know what they can do to save it. Hey buddy, no ultimate, so we can't quite get him. Nice little poke. Gonna work over to the dragon, into the reset I'd say, and look to close out this game. Love to see it. Make has teleport, so I reckon he just drops into the bot lane, sorry, to the top lane, and just goes deep as hell. And his team could probably commit on the other side of the map. Let's see the macro. Picks up Black Cleaver, picks up the stopwatch too. If I'm him, I just hard commit down top. Let's see, I think, my, like, he doesn't look to be hard committing down top at all. Is my macro wrong? Okay, good, thank God. I was questioning my entire existence then. People ask me how you get good at macro. How do I get improve your macro? For me, man, I just watch so many VODs that, like, I just watch what these players do, and I feel like, I don't, like, I, I actively think about it a little bit, but a lot of the times I'm not actively thinking about it. But I feel like subconsciously, I get a feel for where to go and what to do, just because I'm watching so many of these bloody VODs. I see what Fake, are, Dopa, Bloody Chovy all do and where they go. And I feel like just subconsciously watching a lot of these VODs actually really helps out with macro. Um, in by the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, Faker did this on this VOD. And I just, I don't know, man. I just feel like I do it without thinking now, increasing my macro. Obviously, like, actively thinking about it is great as well, but I feel like, like, subconsciously, just watching bloody high elo VODs helps out a lot. Let me know if you guys agree. You guys think your macro has increased or decreased watching along with me? As Gwen drops in the bot lane, his whole team groups on him. Gwen has teleport as well, so it's going to be a 4-1 scenario. You don't need to pressure in too hard here, I don't think. 
Gwen should be able to absolutely roll over the top of this Renekton. So if you guys just hold here with the wave, Gwen should be able to draw pressure. If two or more commit for the Gwen in the side lane, you got free access into the top lane, great number advantage. It should just be a slow and methodical squeeze as they fully commit for the Gwen in the bot lane. And do you see, they might kill the Gwen, but it should open up the top lane now to get the tower. Once you get the tower, um, Faker's got an open little space to try and lay down his ultimate. I wouldn't say good death by Gwen. Like, even if you're splitting the side lane, you shouldn't die like that. The op like the, the best bit is if they all come to you and then you just slowly space away and jog out. Um, but Gwen fully commits, tries to get killed, doesn't get it. But the macro, it's still a positive because you open their base. But I know this is sometimes hard with lower elo macro. Like, you've got mid lane open and your whole team just groups mid. It's so weird. Everyone just groups mid. It's like, guys, there's no objectives here. It's either the enemy comes out and we just ARAM and win, or we can just slowly win in the side lanes. I know, like, sometimes it works in low elo, like it, it, which is kind of disgusting, but I don't know, man. It definitely is not the right macro core. As we've got top lane shoving, bot lane shoving. We've got blue, we've got red. We're hard chilling, man. We don't need to take a recall. We can look to pick off the, the Renekton in the top side. Come on. Pop a cull into his skull. Bloody Renekton. Let's see how it goes. Yep. Just putting it all into him. He got a dash away. Has his flash too. And now there's only one tower left to break. With the inhibitors. And once you get triple inhibs, the game's done. I rarely see games where triple inhibs get dropped and there's a comeback. It's too much pressure from the, the supers. You get double supers in every lane. That's the kick. Cogmore. Probably not going to have enough damage or space and again on Faker. He's hovering in the back lines. Just weaving his autos to CC the Lee Sin up. Now Renekton moves in. Front to back. Great spacing. And we should be able to close this game out. It's been pretty slow and methodical, but I've really enjoyed it. And I'll probably jump onto another VOD next game. Hopefully, I'll try and get one that isn't, um, I don't really like this, this, I mean, Faker got four kills in the early game. We'll try and get a little bit of a slower game. But, I mean, it's always a bloody pleasure watching Faker. Play a little bit of solo queue and look into his decision making and his mechanics. He made a couple of small errors this game, but mainly it's just limit testing. Um, and I'll see you boys on the next game, all right? So stay tuned. Jumping into the second game now. We're up against the Lee Sin mids. Let's see how we get it. I mean, technically Lee Sin should do very well into Lucian, I reckon. You can get a little bit of armor going, get a bit beefy, and catch him off guard with a nice little flank. Lucian, really susceptible to like a flash kick or like a dash kick if Lucian's not watching carefully. And the Lee Sin has great sustain. You got that Doran shield. And that teleport to really negate some early damage. Let's see what Faker can get done. It's still a huge range advantage. Faker moves up. It's all about that level two, remember? And he's just trying to like, you can see him hovering. Like he wants this, this minion to get low and then he'll queue it to try and land some poke on Lee. We're able to do that. It's not the most poke, but it's the little tiny things, guys. Just one auto. It's the snowball effect, okay? It will add up over time. Unless, of course, <laughs> well, in saying that, Lee Sin's full health again, so I guess it didn't matter at all. But you know what I mean. And I'm, this is where you hit level two, okay? First minion on second wave. Unless you've got like a, you've killed a ward or something, or got an assist on like a, an, an invade kill. That level 2 will be from the first minion on the second wave, and that's where you're really looking to move up and pressure it in. This wave will slow shove into the tower. Lee Sin will just wait for it, and then Faker will try and get a ward onto the map. Usually, you put it onto the enemy wraiths, because the jungle will path through there, and it's really nice tracking. But Faker, holding off. Lee, man. And they've got a ward on the enemy red. Did I spot someone there? Because it just expires. Faker just easing into it. 
too many times I do this where I just fully trade over and over on Lucian. And then I've ended up taking more health from bloody accidentally taking tower shots or minion aggro. And I'm half mana and the enemy laner just out sustains me. I do it sometimes in like a cast in it, man. I just ruin the lane. So you gotta be pretty cautious. Lee in Dude, this sustain is gross. Leeson tries wants to like hold the wave out a little bit. And you can see Rumble. He gets the car this. Faker was ready to move first too. Seven or eight CS lead to start the lane. And Rumble will get double scuttle too. All priority in the mid lane. And this is why these picks are so good, right? Picks like Lucian where you just dominate the first like five, ten minutes. Your jungler has complete control. Okay, this will be interesting. So Lee Sin has just sacked lane and he's going to try and move for the scuttle. The problem is the enemy top lane is there. So Rumble sacks the scuttle. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. Why do my junglers, they would never give that up. They suicide for double scuttle and my entire lane, Lee Sin gets the kill and my lane's over. But if you're a jungler, please, like, there's no top lane prior and Lee Sin was moving, okay? It's probably going to be a loss. You don't need to coin flip. You've already got the kill. So Rumble sacks it. And he's going to head back into his own jungle as Lee Sin. Bob is so far back in this lane just collecting CS. He'll just wait for his jungle to try and gank him. Or like at level 6, look for an all-in. And they're going to have a bit of a beefier comp. I think if... He, yeah. I'm trying to think if you really do want to go Kraken. This should still be a Gale Force game. The extra mobility get out of Lee Sin and the Malphite be too valuable as he spots the Karthus on the map. Heading into level 6 on this wave, I believe. This wave or next? It's maybe the start of next. No, he hits it right now. Let's see if he tries to pull it. The next wave is about to come in with the... Yeah, there's, the angle's not really too right. 17 CS lead though already. And Faker just not missing CS. The best bit about Lucian mid, it's so nice to CS with. It really pains me to see... Because he doesn't wear... He doesn't use skins, doesn't wear skins. Um, but I think that High Noon Lucian has been mathematically, scientifically proven to do an extra 12% damage. So... I'm paid by Riot Games to say that, but I do think there's a couple of Lucian skin that feels like it does more damage. And I think High Noon is probably the best. Um, it feels to me the best. I like Sweetheart too, actually, but it's Sweetheart, Heartseeker, whatever it is. The love one. Makes me feel warm and fuzzy as potentially a River Skirmish. Karthus is here. Faker just unloads. Get out of there, boys. Do not touch my jungler. Really zero risk at all. But Lee's six now. And you gotta be careful. Do not underestimate Lee Sin damage with no items. He doesn't he has such high bases. You need to respect him at all times. He gets that flash kick with his jungler there, you're doomed, trust me. Now Faker running a little bit low on mana. You don't want to be the first one to back in the mid lane, essentially, unless you're taking a cheater recall where you can kind of force an item advantage. Like Chovy probably does this the best where he just I've, he almost never is forced to take like the first or like a bad base. He's always putting the enemy on the bad base and he dictates dictates like the base is in the lane. Probably the most important thing for a mid lane is you dict dictating how the base is going to happen and make it favorable for you where you're getting the waves in or you're getting better item spikes. Like obviously for mages, it's normally around 1300 plus a refillable potion and a control. And then I guess for AD picks, I mean like probably similar right looking for the noon quiver Baker grabs it god 72 at 7 he has teleport remember and he's gonna teleport straight back into the mid lane three bickies they're not worth selling these days really and the rumble overextends get picked up enemy team has the gold advantage here and Lee Sin gets the kill <laughs> hate that I want to learn base. Remember, Lee Sin, he has teleport, but he hasn't based yet. We can grab a plate. Half a kills of gold. 
would be bloody nice as Karthus extends here and Quinn picks up him. Reading for the red. Mason didn't go for the back. Doesn't want to give this bloody plate. I think Faker can just pressure for it. There's nothing that Lee can do. And I wouldn't be surprised if he unloads an ult here and maybe tries to force a flash. Lee Sin just going to sack it. Cheers for the plate, buddy. Faker into the... Oh, if that landed. Thought he might have tried to tank a tower shot there to stop the recall. Probably would have been good. Did Rumble... Rumble laid down the carpet there. Lee Sin's dropping low and Rumble grabs it. And this is going to be an absolute... Christmas present for Faker in the mid lane. I'm gonna grab some plates. Oh, wait. Karthus grabbed the. Oh my god, that culling. Karthus grabbed the rumble and actually ended up in a one for one. Karthus ult comes through. Faker looking to grab the kill. He'll suicide to the tower. That's a one for one, but it's definitely worth because the whole wave is getting killed. And he's 91 at nine with that kill for himself. Worth as fuck as Aphilios grabs two kills for himself. And I'll be a little bit nervous, man. Aphilos is a great hyper carry in the meta at the moment. Quinn. Who do you guys think of when Quinn... Oh, Lee grabs the kill. Who do you guys... What, what player do you guys think of when you think of a Quinn? I think of Tyler 1's Quinn. But I feel like these days, the boss plays a pretty bloody good um, Quinn. I see him running around the map with like 15 deaths and 15 kills. Always a bit of fun. As we work our way towards the Gale Force. Dragon already picked up by the enemy team. Zhang Zibu U. There's a lot of Chinese players in the Korean server. I found that like most of the games, it's almost like a 50-50 spread it felt like. A lot of the Chinese players prefer to play in the Korean servers than their own. Um... There's essentially in China, you've got the Ionian server, which is like the main server, the biggest one, most competitive. Um, and then of course you've got like, I think it's like 18 or something other servers. And then you've got also got the super server. The super server is wildly known as like the best, like the streamer server, like all the streamers, all the high low streamers go there. They're all one tricks playing like random champions, like the Kiana player, um, like the Fizz player, Mango Fish. Like they all just go there and stream all the one tricks. Um, so it's not the greatest practice environment if you know what i mean it's more annoying whilst the korean high elos seems a lot more strict in the meta um and of course you got all the korean pros to play with too sitting with the absolutely gigantic cs advantage for faker and it should be a pretty slow paced game 19.4k gold is set to 18 about 1.5k gold lead for blue side. The Ezreal Yumi scaling should be fine. I think they've got this. They're going to move up, use the plant, try and scout out some wards in the mid lane. Nothing to be had. And we'll hard shove it again. Yeah, so I actually don't know what's going to happen with Lucian mid after. I don't know if they're planning on changing him this patch or next. And I don't know what the hell they're actually going to do. We'll see. I haven't really checked the PBE. But also this patch, there's, there's, gonna, there's just going to be so many changes this patch, honestly, because all the mobility changes, there's two new items. There's going to be something so broken, man. I cannot wait. You just got to be sure to get on it quick and get on it fast and abuse it before that any type of hotfix nerfs come through. As Lee Sin has his stride breaker. Quinn zones him out. We'll head back to base. We should have the Gale Force here at 12 minutes this game. I think he hit it at 11 last game, but he didn't get that quad. But as like, okay, teleport's in the bot lane. Like, as you guys know, this the, the CS is the most important. If you want consistency, just make sure you're bloody hitting and grabbing your creeps, eh? And make sure to steal them away. Stealing your creeps away from your team members as we hit 130 at 12. It's just a surefire way to get consistent item spikes. I don't think you guys should be aiming for 10 CS per minute, by the way. I think in solo queue, 7 to 8 CS per minute is great. If you're hitting anything less than that, 
you better be playing like a really high tempo roaming champion like Talon, Iana, um, think like Pike mid or something crazy. If you're not hitting those seven, eight CS per, per minute numbers, it just means you're forgoing so much CS. So there better be a bloody damn good reason. Because you're playing something like an Oriana and you're averaging five CS per minute. Um, yeah, I've got, got words to say to you. Punishment time. Keep on hard shoving down the mid. This looks like a better CS game. Damn, 145. This is Chobi level CS. And we won't swap into the side lane until this bot lane outer gets dropped. Head back. Got enough of the boots. Lucidity boots this game. Damn, we're going all out. Um, and it will be, of course, the grudge again second. He opts instead of the armor pen to start getting a little bit of cooldown reduction from the fully field Warhammer. And this will synergize with the Lucidity Boots really nicely to get a lot of mana. You gotta be careful though. A lot of mana, a lot of CDR. You gotta be careful with your mana, however. But we should be getting offloaded this blue anyway by the Rumble. Be bloody days, mate. And Rumble won't be jungling after this patch, thank god. They are putting an extra cooldown. Wait, this patch or next? I thought they were meant to be. I thought Rumble, the W cooldown was getting nuked so they couldn't overheat on level 1 clear. Oh, he had to flash that. I guess he can still clear, just be a lot slower. More pops the art. This 1v1 against the Lee Sin. Ooh, we're able to get it. Is Karma able to trade though? We're just gonna get killed by the IG. At what cost? Come on, mate. Come on. Ooh, I think Karma lives. Some nice little jukes on those Lee Sin cues by Faker, but. Wasn't quite enough in the end. And this should be a bloody slaughter for red side. Here we go. Oh, that damage. Non-existent into the bloody Malphite. Um, and Fake will head back to base. Not much progress on his items, is there? And we should slowly start dropping into the side lane. As Yumi is the perfect mid lane, bot lane duo. And once we start getting some of this pen, we can match the Malphite. He is going to have a shit ton of armor, but... As he's got the gauntlet and the boots and the bramble. Oh, the CS, man. Double cannons? How good does this feel? Now he has a control ward. I want him to go deep and get it. Probably in the river brush. Let's see what he does. Does he, oh, he's gonna head back into the mid lane. I thought you, yeah, I was just thinking he might try and shove one more then group. But I guess he just doesn't want to risk it. As ultimate, Gale Force up two, E, W, and shreds with the R. He's gonna dash right in there. He grabs the Karma for himself. Got to kite back. Aphilios, no sums, remember? And we're able to get a double kill for ourselves. Five and two for Faker here. That CDR really working out. Increase. How many dashes he gets in that team fight to gap close? 169 CS to 116 of Lee. Tight game. Gold's only like 300 for blue. And we've got the grudge. Dude, 16 minutes, 50 seconds. Yellow Force Grudge combo. And this, of course, is where you come to life. The weakness of Lucian... <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> the weakness of Lucian, I guess. People say, like, you know, he's a squishy champion and his late game's not the best. Like... But other than that, like, I don't know, man. I still just don't even know if that's... Like, if you play a good Lucian, he really is very hard to exploit him, honestly. He has a strong lane. He's a strong early game. His wave clear is actually solid. A lot of mobility. And we're going to try and pick... Oh, that ultimate wasn't the greatest. You can see he gets it onto the Aphelios. Just kites out. And he's got to be careful of the Malphite ult. We have no flash. Malphite ult's on cooldown. He should be fine, actually. Let's set up for the Drake. 
But yeah, the Philios was just the angle was just off there on that Philios with the culling. Who do you reckon Yumi's gonna pick this game? You got so many good candidates. You got Quinn, you got uh Ezreal, you got Rumble. Who are you gonna stick to? Or you got Faker is Lucian. I'd stick to Faker. But look. I'd stick to Faker. I probably shouldn't say that, but I would. As um We're gonna work on these towers, mate. Rumble gonna hover. Teleport up into the top side. What is happening up there? We are just not going to pay attention and we'll sit down in the bot lane, try and work away. Get a little bit of gold up. Carthus grabs two. Lee Sin grabs the Ezreal. And never, ever in your life just group... Like, he had no mana, really, even before clearing that. Like, never just go and group on a lost team fight. If there's a tower and waves in the bot lane, the gold... Like, you just want to salvage as much gold and put it back onto your team's plate as you can. As we... Like, you don't want to just run across and just group. By the time you get there, the fight's already done, guys. It's either you win, you've won or lost the fight. You get there and nothing. The guaranteed play is sitting in, like, it's always going to be a positive trade for yourself. Like, if, if you just sit there, not a positive trade, but, like, you're going to net good gold just by getting towers and getting creeps. As we're going to be getting the Black Cleaver again, of course, Lee Sin and Malphite stacking a shit ton of armor. As we're 200 CS at 19. We're still down a gold, a one, one and a half K gold. Looking to go for an ARAM. Pick anybody out with Faker's ult. You just want to E Gale Force, you gap close a shit ton and just cull them down. He has teleport, but like bot, it been, him being bot lane is definitely the best, but he's just looking to set up a pick and then maybe into a Baron, I guess. Here we go. Mid lane Aram against Karthus. Malphite is dangerous. Malphite looking for the flash R. Ah, you don't want to stack. If you're Faker, guys, don't stack on all your carries. And Faker drops that. Oh, double ultimates. Beautiful flash onto the Malphite. We're going in now, getting the slows onto Lee Sin. Lee Sin grabs the kick. Is it going to be enough? No, it's not. Grab the double kill, and now we'll grab the Baron. This is really nice. Like, I was wondering why he kind of grouped. But it makes a lot of sense because their team, if they get a pick, a kill or two, they're going to set up for Nash. And that's pretty much going to be a game winner. So he waits for the Karthus. He waits for everybody to get out of position. Pops the culling into the Rumble ult. And that was just too free. Crazy mechanics on the Flash Malphite ult. As his team is going to drop so low. It's not going to work. Yumi, get on me, babe. Quinn moves in. Karthus. Very angry man. The death time is a too short, unfortunately, for the Baron. But I like I like the idea of the play. Maybe if you, if you had a faster Baron AD, I don't know, or a Faker stayed on it. But I think he just wanted to start it and bait them in, get some more kills for himself. I should have enough for Cleaver now, right? He'd be bloody sitting on a shit ton of gold. Mm, not quite. Gets the Kindle Gym. Since Aphelios gets IE, I'm going to be a little bit scared. Making sure to grab every jungle camp imaginable on the way to blue. Don't be afraid to take your jungle camps. They don't mind. If they're not pathing that way, they don't mind. We'll give the Gromp to the Rumble. Here you go, buddy. I have teleport still. Wind runs ignite, so if you're the guy with a teleport, you should always in your head be trying to split the lo the furthest from the objective and let Quinn split the closest, right? But he should be topside here with teleport, hard shove in before the the Baron, before the Dragon. Sorry, like Dragon should be the objective here. He's just gonna teleport straight in for the fight. Like Dragon should be the objective here. So if you want to split topside with teleport, you could. Problem is, if you miss it, if the enemy just hard engages instantly with Malphite, it's probably going to be too late, even if you do teleport. He has the cleaver too, by the way. Spam pinging the Nash, and they're on it, they're rushing it. 
Ezreal pops the ultimate, gets the vision, and they get the Nash rush. I had no idea that was going on. Leeson kind of made me feel like they were sitting like in a brush mid or something. And they'll pick up the Drake. Oh, the enemy team are going to try and contest it. Let's see how you position. We have no flash. We got to hold the Gale Force to try and react to the Malphite ult, which is kind of hard. Faker. He knows there's a pink here. Okay, beautiful. And a really nice pink drop by Lee there. Lee Sin moving in. I feel like Lee Sin just griefed that, and he does. He gets picked up. Faker's not done. Wait for the ultimate, and we are going to cull. We're not able to get the Duke out on the Malphite, but Malphite has no follow-up. Very close to dropping him. I think he tried to E, but it was a little bit... He just got caught on like half the dash. Pick up red, player on the vision. So much CDR too. But yeah, this pick feels really nice. The only like... He is pretty far ahead. Like you should, if you're not if you're not getting yourself leads on Lucian, and you're coming into the mid lane behind, like the mid game behind, you will have a bad time. You feel so useless. You need to be making sure if you play this champion, you're netting yourselves these 100 CS leads that Faker has got him for himself here. At only 24 minutes. As we pop the culling, good luck. There we go. You can see there just how much. How annoying that slow is. You're never going to get on top of him. Rumble? That was my Gromp. Would have healed me. Rumble grabs it. And I feel like we still got a long way to go for this game. I'm excited. I want to see the fourth and fifth items. What did he go last game? He was on stopwatch. Might end up going for the GA, I guess. Maybe just use... I mean, stopwatch wouldn't be bad this game either for the Rumble. Or for the Malphite ult. Okay. Not sure what that's going to be for. It can't really be for, for an IE. It could be, but like it'd be pretty bad. I'm guessing GA is better. And we'll move out. Try and set up some vision with the Yumi. We've got our flash. Teleport's almost up too. Surely they know he's coming. There's vision here. Don't overcommit for the lead. We'll drop into the top. Hard shove it out. We've got teleport to regroup so Yumi can go and group up with her AD. You can see Faker. He's just like he's just watching the fights as they unfold. You should, like, if you can, guys. Like, you, uh, the F keys are great for this because, like, you can look into your lane and you can just instantly toggle on your team. We teleport in now. Teleport on top of the Malphite. Oh, that culling. Only half of the back end hits as Lee Sin moves in. We're gonna have to pop our flash. Hopefully, his team's able to follow up. What's it been so far? It's only been a one for one, but look at Quinn on the bot side of the map. Hardcore splitting. Faker. Clear the camps a little bit. Are they able to find anyone here? No. Ooh, Lee Sin. He's caught. That W slow. You see that you just EW and you get a nice little slow on them. We have your autos. There you go, mate. As Quinn picks up the kill onto the Aphelios in the bot lane. And that is going to start opening up the game. We'll just play it slow, head back to base. 280. 286. 27. Good tempo. Going to hold out for the tower. Going to be Cloud Soul spawning off of the reset. Baker's got Cull. He, he wants to sit and try and pick someone here. I don't think, yeah. I think it's a little bit too risky. If you get picked and they counter onto the cloud, it's going to be a bad time. We'll head back to base. He does. He gets the GA. GA fourth. Okay. And red pot. Oh, yeah. He knows this next fight is going to mean everything.
Lush buff. Blue buff should go to the Lucian. And now with the GA, you can play disgustingly aggressive. You can frontline Lucian if you want. Try and just bait every major skill shot and ultimate available from the enemy team. You do, I mean, it would actually just be nice to get hit by the Malphite ult, right? Get a save your carries. Through mid, very important here to get the waves first. Baker will sort mid lane out and then it'll cut across. Oh my god, that was absolutely disgusting. He should be able to pick up the bloody Carthus as well. Lee Sin moving in. I don't think Lee has the damage. He simply doesn't have the damage. They're going to be able to kill everybody on the map. Lee and Aphelios left, but they're going to pick up the soul. Yep. Yeah. I think Faker shoves through mid, then regroups for... Oh, he doesn't know. His team can... They, I feel like they can do the Nash. They probably don't even need him. Okay, Ezreal. I guess we'll go through then. And Lee Sin picks up the kill onto the Queen. I feel like it's farming out bot. Hmm. Rumble drops the ultimate. Onto the Nash. Hey, can we drop the Culling too, Faker? Your culling actually really doesn't do much to like objectives and minions and stuff like that anymore. Let's so we'll go back to base. 10 and 2. Tori, 100 CS at 29, man. I'd love to be this fed. Hmm. Interesting. He's going for more last item. I don't know about that. I really don't know about that. Some more survivability, I guess. Ugh. Carthus Mouth, that's the only AP. Interesting. I don't know, man. Like Hex Drinker and more, their item, like their gold efficiency for their stats is just dog shit to me. I'd rather go like a Bloodthirster or something and get the shield up if you want to be survive, like if you want to survive. Got two supers in the bot side. We got Nash, so we should be able to run it through mid. Just play two lanes. You don't need to play three. Yeah, Quinn, I think Quinn deep splits bot, and then you just siege up with your team. You need to try and buff these minions to stop the clear, but... Okay, as the ultimate comes out... Holy shit. That's fucked. That's just absolutely cull lead to no health, and that's gonna guarantee... That's gonna secure the mid lane in here. Did the team not get it? It must be low health. Yeah, Faker just gonna man it. And he... Okay, let's... He played that very bad. I, I I think he tried to flash and then get abilities off afterwards, and he gets picked for a thousand gold shut down. Aphelios has great guns here. And Faker with a horrendous mistake, giving the enemy team an opportunity to come back into the game. Not over until the next six explodes. Well. Oh, that's a huge rumble up. We're gonna flash in. Ezreal should be able to grab them both, I think. Wait, Malphite? You didn't even see where the Malphite came from. What the hell? No way that Ezreal ult hits. And they'll be able to run it through for the end because it's 31 minutes. Well, I mean, that was a really good game by Faker into just the worst frontlining mistake in the mid-late game. He had GA, but his flash was just bad. But anyways, guys, good luck in your own games. Try this Lucian mid out. Try and synergize it, especially if you have like an AP jungle duo or something. But until next time, I catch us later. Love you boys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.